think most people out there know that I am a big fan of Sig Sauer. In fact, I've got pretty much every production model gun that they make in their P-Series line of guns right now. I've got almost every one. I'm a big fan of Sig Sauer. But lately, Sig Sauer is really pissing me off. Now, I know you're going to say, well, it's not like you, Yankee, to say something when you're pissed off. But, well, this time I'm going to make an exception. Now, for those of you out there that are going to say, oh, well, go ahead and bitch, we'll just call it the Whammy Lands. Well, go ahead and call them because it's my birthday. If I want to bitch, I'm going to bitch. So I'm going to tell you why I'm getting mad at Sig Sauer. There's really three reasons, and I'm going to go over those three reasons from the least aggravating to the most aggravating. Now, I'm not sure how well here you can actually see the wear, but there is a lot of wear on the slide. I've had this gun for about a week. I've put it in out of a holster several times since then, but that's a lot of wear. Now, I will say I have been practiced drawing this gun at the range, so it has been in and out of the holster a lot, but that's still a lot of wear for a gun that's only a week old. Especially when you consider that this flat dark earth finish is more expensive than their melanite finish, their black finish. And the melanite finish wears much better. It's much tougher than this finish. This finish is just Cerakote. And it wears like Cerakote. Not even particularly well applied Cerakote. It seems to be wearing pretty quickly. So, you know, I'm not real thrilled about that. But it is a carry gun. And it is a stainless slide. So that's really a minor thing. Like I say, this is a carry gun. I really don't care if it has any wear. I am a little upset that I paid more for a gun that wears quicker. But other than that, it's not a big deal. Now, the second reason I'm getting mad at SIG is because I have bought some new grip modules from them. I bought an OD green grip module so I could give that gun the kind of a two-tone or three-tone look that my Beretta M9A3 has. And you can see here what it looks like with that kind of tri-tone look. And I really, really like the look, but there's only one real big problem. And that is if you look there at the slide release. SIG has the new design here for slide releases now. It isn't the same old slide release on the old 250s. The grip frames they keep sending me for the 320 are the old 320 and old 250 style grip frame with the different setup for the slide release. It doesn't fit right. It doesn't look right. Now, when I called SIG about this, they said that's because the old part number is the same as the new part number. And they're trying to send people new part numbers, but since they're the same, you never know which one you're going to get, especially if you order something that they have some old ones sitting around of. And I think that's unacceptable. If you're like a shop or a store and you've got some old stock on hand, that's great. You can sell that. But this is SIG themselves. They know they don't make the gun like that anymore. So if you order parts for the newer gun, they should send you the frame for the new gun. That having the same stock number thing. That's ridiculous. Give it a different number. Call it the same number with a B on the end. I don't care, but be able to differentiate. If someone buys a new gun and they want the new part, the manufacturer should be able to send them the right part. Still, that's not a huge issue because I'm just going to keep sending those back to them until they actually send me a new one. I don't care how many times I got to do it. But that brings me to the third reason I'm pissed at them. And this is the biggest thing that has me pissed off about Sig Sauer right now. Every time I order one of these little frames that weigh a few ounces, they're charging me $10 every time they ship one of these to me. That's kind of expensive, but that's not the real problem. If you look at this invoice here from one of the grip frames I ordered, you can see they shipped it on the 1st. It's going to get here on the 15th. This isn't coming from Taiwan or Israel. This is coming from the lower 48 states, and it's still taking 15 days to get to me. Now let's put that a little bit into perspective. If they would send this gun to me by someone on a bicycle, that would take about eight days. If they would change riders every so often, someone on a bicycle could cover the distance between Exeter, New Hampshire and where I live in about eight days. In fact, if they could somehow line up enough Olympic sprinters to make it all the way across the country to where I live, they could do it in about six days. Hell, and if they had some sort of old Pony Express style system where one horse rider handed it off to another, it'd be here in five days. And to make it even sillier, if they were to put it in a little sled that was drawn by eight tiny little hummingbirds, it would get here in about four days. Little hummingbirds could fly it from there to here in about four days. So why is it taking over two weeks to get here through FedEx? The United States Postal Service would charge about $3.95 for this item to be sent, and they would get it here in two to three days tops. FedEx sucks. UPS 
sucks. I've had the same issues with both of them when I get gun parts from companies that are using UPS or FedEx. It regularly takes 10 days to two weeks to get a part from somewhere like Texas or Idaho here to me in Washington State. And it costs usually two to five times as much to do it. So come on, Sig Sauer, get it together. If you put a special finish on a gun and you charge more for it, make it a better finish. Don't make it a cheaper finish. And if you're going to send someone a part for that gun, make sure you can send them the right part, the part for the current production gun. And in this day and age, there's no excuse to take two weeks to get someone a product. Find a better way to ship. There's no excuse for that. There's no reason why someone should wait that long for their parts. So get it in gear and get things done right.